Good morning and welcome to the free Decision Point trading room. It is Monday, August 12th, and we have a jam-packed show for you as always. We'll be going through the market. Uh, we've got some special subjects that might interest you. We're going to be talking about mortgage rates in Japan, among other things. Um, the Q&A box is for you to give us your questions and your symbol requests. We should have time at the end of the program to do your symbol requests. And then the chat room is for you to talk amongst yourselves. I do have a moderator in there, and it's a great place to kick around ideas and see what other, what other people are thinking about on the market. All right, Dad, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started with the signal tables. Okie doke. Okay, about well, the, around the first of the month, this table was all buys. Uh, but now you see the intermediate term portion is becoming... Um, uh, a, a wash with neutral signals. Uh, a buy signal is when the 20 EMA crosses up through the 50 EMA. And that's uh, called a silver cross. And the neutral signal is when the 20 EMA falls back below the 50 EMA, above the 200 EMA. And that's uh, basically because we don't want to go full... Uh, you know, short sale. This is a soft sell signal. Uh, neutral, it means you're basically neutral to market. You, you're either in cash or fully hedged. But uh, these are not action signals. You got to look at the chart and decide what whether what's appropriate for you to do. Anyway, a lot of neutral signals showing up. Uh, the, the last little bit of rally that we've had uh, is... Uh, We've, we've got a handful of, uh, of these uh, indexes and sectors and, and industry groups uh, getting ready to go uh, on a on a neutral signal. Uh, but uh, there's not too much action right now for in in these in indexes. Okay, long term, trend model is a we have the 50 EMA crosses up through the 200 EMA that's known as a golden cross and when it goes back down through we only do a buy or sell on the long term and it's called a death cross when it goes back down and it's a sell signal anyway look I'm looking for more uh, neutral signals be showing up in a couple of days this week. Our bias assessment is uh, mostly bearish on the intermediate term. This is uh, when the silver cross index um, crosses down through its 10 EMA. And uh, when that when it happens, it, you're assuming a bearish bias on that index. And uh, when the Golden Cross long-term bias, uh, when the Golden Cross index crosses down through its 20 EMA, that's considered uh, going to be long-term bearish bias. Okay, let's go to... Checking the market. Um, we've got a rising wedge also, in this case, we'll call it a, a reverse pennant formation. That is uh, most likely to break to the downside. And we're, we're noticing we've had a couple of good days of rally uh, last week, and then it's, but it's starting to um, dis dissipate that strength. The dollar index 
it's uh, rallying somewhat. Uh, let, let's look at a a little longer term. Okay, broke down from a rising wedge formation and uh, basically trending down. Gold is up today, um, 1.39%, and it's coming up to close to all-time highs again. Um, it's been locked in this uh, narrow trading range. Uh, here's a bit long-term breakout here, and now it's consolidating that breakout. And for those of us that hold gold, we're hoping it'll go higher, but... It's still looking positive. Crude oil rallying off a low. Let's take a look at a little longer term. Okay. So we've got a declining tops line coming across here. It's getting close to that. But essentially in a trading range here since uh, February. Uh, bonds, there's a long bond, and it's had a breakout and snapback, and it's rallying again off of that. Again, let's look at the one-year chart. Okay. Okay, this is, uh, we've got a, this is the weekly chart. We've got a reverse head and shoulders here. This is the confirmation line, and it's broken out of that, so we would expect to it to go higher about by about up to here, maybe to 120. And uh, uh, after that, I don't know, we've got a, this is a falling wedge, which uh, we expect to break out to the upside, which it did. And uh, uh, beyond the, the minimum upside, uh, I will, uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. The 10 year treasury, yield you notice it broke down out of this falling wedge which it was very bearish but now it's popped back up and it's hugging the bottom uh, of the falling wedge formation when it comes to interest rates we don't look at mortgage rates so often we do cover this this is out of the uh, decision point alert on fridays we we show the new interest rate and we have a chart but on mortgage rates most of the buyers are can afford a certain payment so if the price goes up and their payment goes up they're going to have to look for something cheaper uh back in 2021 in january 2021 uh payment of two thousand fifteen dollars a month at 2.65 percent with carry a mortgage of uh, 500,000. Last week, it, it went up, it, it basically it dropped last week, but you can see the chart there, uh, down to 6.47. But for with a payment of 215, it, it can only carry a mortgage of three, $319,800, which is 36% lower than this. That, that puts so many of these buyers out of the market there you know even if they want to buy they can't afford it because the month of payment uh won't carry the mortgage that they need um we also look at the fixed mortgage amount say 200 i'm sorry five hundred thousand dollars in two uh 2021 it was uh at 6.5 percent two thousand fifteen dollars uh last week at the new interest rate, it's three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars that it can carry. So this is uh, again, some people will be able to handle that, but most people are are waiting for interest rates to come down. So unless they are absolutely pressed and have a substantial down payment, uh, people aren't buying. So we can see twenty twenty one very nice launch now we've got kind of a rounded top and hinting that it may go lo lower here's the long-term chart and you can see in, in 
in perspective, the interest rates today aren't that bad in a historical context. And, uh, uh, you know, in my, in my case, in 1972, we were paying seven and a quarter percent when we bought this house. All right. Um, here's our interest, our yield array. Um, it's kind of looks like it's holding at this level, um, a good support level. If that fails substantially, we still have this level. Um, I suppose it's really going to count on what the uh, Fed does next month. Here we have the Magnificent Seven stocks, uh, beginning with Apple. Uh, it's um, got a declining tops line, really went way down last uh, week. And now it's basically, it's a kind of an exaggerated uh, reverse pennant formation, which is, is a bearish formation. Looking at the the weekly chart for Apple, and you see it, it's broken out of this rising wedge, which is bullish, but then uh, came back last week, uh, but bounced back out of there. So looking uh, decent at this time. Amazon, uh, declining tops line. Um, it's rallying back to that uh, line, and uh, <clears throat> we could make it a little less accelerated by drawing it over that peak. But uh, right now, Amazon is not looking that healthy. We've got, it's, it's again, it's just kind of an exaggerated reverse pennant formation. <clears throat> the weekly chart, so you know, it had a nice long-term breakout, but it's back in, in uh, below that now. And at this point, I would assume it's not going to go any uh, little higher. The um, weekly PMO, we've got a negative divergence on that, and it's falling fairly uh, fast. Google, uh, below its declining tops line, you notice that it, 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 on this try, it didn't make it to the line, and it's pretty far below, again, on this try higher. The weekly chart, nice rising uh, bottoms line. Uh, ba basically, it's uh, pulled back to that line, and this line of support are close to it. So right now, fairly bullish looking, um, if it can still maintain that uh, rising trend. Meta, basically, it's... This is this is basically a lot uh, an island reversal possibility, but it's also a consolidation, and uh, I would have to say with the PMO rising above the zero line, uh, it's a bullish looking chart. The uh, weekly chart we've got a double top formation. Here's the confirmation line, and uh, so far it's stayed above this rising trend line. Microsoft declining tops line, a reverse pennant formation, trying to PMO is trying to bottom. Um, but right now it's a fairly bearish configuration. Weekly chart, a rising wedge formation, and it's broken down from that. And, uh, and again, we've got a, a negative divergence here. So Microsoft is bearish. NVIDIA is having a fairly decent rally today, um, back up to its declining tops line. PMO is trying to, to uh, bottom. And here's the weekly chart. Here's what caused all the problems, this uh, parabolic rise and then the parabolic uh, uh, 
curve broke down and uh, we're staying above this level of support so far. We peaked down below it yeah, last week, but it's uh, uh, holding so far. Tesla, declining tops line, reverse pennant. Again, so it's this is a bearish chart. And this chart uh, got above this declining tops line, but it's stopped back down below it. The PMO, weekly PMO is topped. So this is this is a bearish chart. And that does it for that. I wanted to let's go first. I wanted to look at the um, the VIX chart. This is uh, not the way we normally display it. This is the way everybody else displays it. Uh, uh, this, but historically, this is this is all the history of the VIX, and you can see uh, last week the VIX was the third highest in its history. Here we've got uh, the COVID nineteen drop uh, here in uh, two thousand twenty, and here we have the the financial crisis. Uh, I and I kind of look miss this. Uh, Here's the Bank of Japan raised the interest rates 25 basis points, which is a quarter of a percent in plain English. And uh, so back here, here we go. This is the highest, the highest reading ever was the financial crisis. And this was coming down to the bottom, but it still had uh, s several months to go before the actual price bottom was hit. But uh, when they get this high, <clears throat> you can look for uh, a potential bounce. Here's the 911. Uh, you see it was in in a high range up there, but it did rally from some, but it continued down. This is the long term capital uh, failure back in uh, 1998, and uh, most of you probably don't remember that, but. Uh, that caused quite a, a problem uh, back then. And uh, it's almost, it was basically a, a bear market. It was down 19% uh, in that little dip down there. So um, that's the VIX. Hmm. Now- So I guess we do need to be kind of, um, you know, not necessarily on the lookout, but certainly aware that that backdrop is there that you know we're looking for a bear market but certainly that speaks to a possible um rally here within right well you know our assumption is that we are in a bear market uh, but let me go over a little bit of what caused all the problems last week first of all this is the uh japan stock exchange and uh Back in 1989, it had a parabolic advance. The Japanese were buying real estate all over the place and it just was a huge bubble and the bubble broke. And it took 19 years to hit, it finally hit the bottom. And now, uh, and now that, that would have been a good place to be a, a buyer. Now, assume if, suppose you were retiring at this point here. And your your account would be dropping, dropping, dropping for 19 years. Bad time to retire. Here, a good time to retire because everything's going up. But let's get back to what happened last week. The um, um, it was caused by what is referred to as the yen carry trade. And what it what the what it is, their interest rates are so low. I mean, I think they're zero. It, it costs nothing. Or next to nothing to borrow yen. So individuals or companies were borrowing yen and buying uh, other assets that they expected to appreciate. And what happened is uh, when they, when Jap the Japan, when the Bank of Japan raised interest rates last week, um, it caused the cost of those yen to go up and these trades were unwinding at a huge rate. Uh, it was down around 10% at one point last week. Uh, 
the Nikkei. And uh, so that's that's where the trouble came from. And it seems to have stabilized at this point, uh, but we'll have to see. So I don't know uh, if that contagion is going to continue to pull, pull our market down. Uh, right now, it's still digesting, it looks like, for today. Um, and, you know, one of the problems, it took so long for the for the, for the, for the Japan stock exchange to get back up to norm, the level it was at uh, uh, 34 years at, and from May 1989. And, the, and uh, one of the reasons is they, they're doing their very best to have nobody feel any pain. Of course, that can't happen. If you and they're so they're keeping the interest rates unrealistically low, and it's just clogging up the their economy. Uh, but uh, statistic I got out of um, John Malden's uh, newsletter was uh, okay. The Fed balance sheet, and it, you know we're not too happy about how much the Fed has in debt, uh, but the Fed balance sheet is twenty five percent of GDP. When they say balance sheet, I'm assuming they're referring to the debt. Okay. Bank of Japan balance sheet is 127% of GDP. So that's, that's again, it's, it's, it's just messing everything up by not having the people to deserve to suffer, suffer. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, I think that'll, cover it for me let's let me take a look at the questions so. well we have a, a good one here that we can talk about and that is carl and aaron continue to say we are in a bear market why the market is not far from its highs the s p is above its 200 day moving average i'm curious what leads you to continue to say we are in a bear market well it's just the, the way the market's behaving um it's it's an assumption and it could be wrong, but uh, we're going on the assumption that we're in a bear market, and we would manage uh, our trades or our, and our investments uh, as as if we were in a bear market. Be much more cautious about what we buy and what we try to hold, and that would you know that's that's what we're saying. It's a bear market. We're assuming that. The assumption again could be wrong, but that's what we're working on at this point. Yeah, I would say, you know, there's a lot of weakness that we've seen coming in. Um, there's discussion of, you know, having uh, an economy that won't see a soft landing where we might have a recession. That's going to spook investors even more. Um, I think really what our, our idea is, is that as Carl said, we need to manage our positions and our expectations. You know, we shouldn't be looking for a forceful bull market rally right now with some of the weakness that we're seeing. Right. And uh, another question. So, Carl, you're saying the key is to turn 65 in 2009 and put your money in, in Japan. Exactly. A perfect move. <laughs> okay. Wouldn't it so, be nice if they were all that easy? <laughs> okay, I uh, will turn it back over to you. Oh my goodness, let's get it started. Okay. Well, I did know we didn't do, I don't think you did Bitcoin. I didn't. Yeah, so I do you want to do it? Yeah, go ahead. You've got the... And gold miners. Those are the two you always forget. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, figure out where I am. Gold miners. Okay, gold's rallying today and miners are as well. Got a declining top line. So uh, from this we're, we're in a, a declining trend uh, with miners uh, short-term period since the stop. 
And uh, what about participation here? Yeah, twenty-five percent of stocks below their uh, twenty moving average, twenty-day moving average. Okay. Not particularly healthy. The Silver Cross Index is the one I don't like. Uh, yeah, what is that? Um, 67, still in the bull area. Mm -hmm. All right. And Bitcoin. Okay. Had a, a rally out of this washout here. And now it's, uh, you got a, a moving back down and probably start moving higher out of this flag formation. Let's just look at the long term and got a nice big flag formation off of this parabolic dance. So uh, the showing definitely showing the potential this bullish it's potential to go higher. Anything wow. else? I think those were the only two. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I am gonna look at, I wanted to look at the real estate sector to start my section on sector rotation. Um, the reason being is we talked about the mortgage rate chart. I figured it would be a good time to look into the real estate chart itself and see what's going on because uh, you know, real estate's going to be rate sensitive to the mortgage rate. So with the mortgage rates moving lower, that should help real estate. Um, real estate's been on a pretty nice rally so far. The PMO is topping and it is starting to show some weakness. But overall, the participation within this sector is still very, very high. There is certainly plenty of strength for it to change that momentum and start moving, um, continue, I should say, moving higher. So I'm looking for real estate to do well. It's in a position now where it's kind of chopping and churning around after breaking out above this area of overhead resistance. I think it looks good moving forward, but we do have a little bit more chop and churn likely to deal with as with the rest of the market, I would have to say. You know, I, I forgot to mention I, I, when I was talking about the mortgage rate, uh, the real estate industry is, uh, thing, the things that are happening are just, I, I'm considering it's just setting up a huge disaster. I don't know how it's going to fall out, but one out of four uh, purchases is being, uh, is by, private equity, you know, the big hedge, fund, hedge funds. And the, they're, they're sucking the supply out of the market, you know, for rentals. And I don't know if they're going to be happy with hold, holding that much real estate when things shake out. But, uh, you know, people can't buy now. They've changed all the rules for how realtors get paid. Uh, it's just a lot of turbulence brewing. So uh, I just think it's an area to be careful of. Yeah, absolutely. Long-term, there are a lot of um, long-term implications for this sector in general. Um, shorter term, if we look at what's going on, I think we're going to be okay in this sector, but it does look like it's really up for a bit more um, chop churn, maybe a meltdown toward this area of support um, based on that PMO. But it is um, certainly one of those sectors you're gonna keep an eye on as interest rates start moving lower for mortgages. All right, let us look at the sector candle glance as we talk sector rotation right now. Currently, we can see that the PMO is declining on most of our growth sectors here. You've got um, the PMO does look like it wants to turn up though on technology. So we might be seeing some rotation come back into that sector. But as you can see, the declining trend is still in force. So we still need to be very cautious of that particular sector right now. Com services, the PMO is starting to turn up. 
discretionary though are more aggressive of all of the sectors is seeing a PMO that is moving lower. And at this point in a strong declining trend, had a breakaway gap over here, continuation gap over here, did find support at this level, which it needed to do, but certainly taking its time moving back up and the PMO is still very negative. Notice that scooter rank as well at 8.4, not uh, really only rivaled by technology with a scooter of 15.1. So these are two areas to really be cautious with at this point. And how are our defensive sectors doing? Well, we've got rising PMO on consumer staples, very, um, I would say, a, a continuous rise here. It looks nice in its rising trend, could make, make its way higher. Other is the healthcare sector, which has a PMO that is about ready to give us a crossover buy signal and on a little rally of its own right now, pulling back a little today. Financials are looking pretty good, although the PMO still hasn't completely turned up, but this does look like a pretty nice rally. It's taken price above the 20-day EMA, although I have to say it is trading below that level right now. There's real estate in its rising trend. We've got a flag formation on utilities. The energy is kind of doing its own thing. It's been in a trading range here, a very extended one. It looks like we're headed back up. There's problems brewing even more so in the Middle East, and that is probably going to keep oil prices rising and hence energy sector rising as well. So I think that the energy sectors, it's on a nice little rally. I think it's gonna extend up toward these tops from that double top we had leading into the decline um, that we're now finally bouncing out of. Materials, not really doing much. Reverse flag, if anything. So I'd be very careful with materials. Um, industrials, making a nice rise at this point. PMO is starting to turn up. So we are seeing some action going there. So we're starting to see some new movement into technology and comm services. And it'll be interesting to see if that can catch on. And if it does, I think we are looking at a nice, um, you know, rally in our future here. But, you know, we have rallies in bear markets. So, you know, we don't want, again, we don't want to get too bullish here with the weakness we're seeing under the surface and with the weakness we're sensing in the economy in general. Okay, so that covers our sector analysis here. I did want to show you one more chart here. Let's just go in here. I want to talk a little bit about the broad market itself. And one way we could take the temperature on the broad market is to look at the NYSE as well as the S&P 400 and 600. But what I wanted to note is that we had a lot of participation that came into the system when the mega cap started to fail. You can see that right back here in July. Um, we did get that move upward. It held some nice participation at that level, but then we drooped and all of that participation went away. We are seeing a little bit of improvement here under the surface, um, but let's not be fooled. The broad market is not completely participating right now and we need it to. Um, mega caps are starting to wake up a little bit. If those get going and the broad market can join, then we're talking bull market move. But right now, the broad market isn't showing the kind of strength we want it to. I mean, we only have 20%, I mean, sorry, 40% above their 20-day EMA, which isn't a bad number, but it is certainly not a good number. We like to see participation over the 50% mark if we can get it there. So that was one of the charts I did want to um, show you with that. And if we look at the S&P 600, similar situation, low percentage in participation, started to see a little bit of action on the rally that we had 
um, last week at the end of the week, but it just isn't enough. We're still very low in our participation readings. Silver Cross still in decline. So we need to get support from all ang angles. And, you know, we got that broad market support before, but it is not there anymore. So there isn't a safety net right now. That's another one of our problems with the market. All right, I think that covers sector rotation. Um, and we looked into the broad market. We talked about real estate. So I think it is time now to go ahead and look at our questions and get into those simple requests. Do we have any questions? Uh, no, not, not, not yet. So okay. Palantir would be the first. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Palantir, let me get my fingers on the keyboard. All right. So what we're looking at on my daily chart is the RSI, the, pro the price momentum oscillator, PMO, the stochastics, the OBV, and then I do relative strength of the group to the S&P. I do relative strength of the stock to the S&P. And then I do one that most people don't do, and that is the stock to its industry group. And this one tells us whether we have a leader or not within that group. And right now, what we're seeing on Palantir is leadership. You can see that we've got rising relative strength against the group. So if you're going to pick one in the group, this is one that you would want to look at on software. Software itself is starting to see a little bit of outperformance kind of coming in there. Um, PMO is on the buy signal. We have a breakout that we had on Friday. It is pulling back toward that breakout point, which is something you would expect to see in a nice rally. So at this point, I mean, it does look like it wants to rally higher. Let's look at the weekly chart just to give us a better idea of where we're at here. And it is that breakout is a really good breakout. I do see, let's see, where is this resistance level? This is the strongest resistance level right here, I would say. And we are um, trading above that right now, pulled up above it, pulling back toward that breakout point, like we see on the daily chart. I think Palantir looks pretty good the way it's set up right now, although I would tell you that we need to be careful with those growth areas of the market. If the market does resume this decline as we think it will, this is not the area you're going to want to be in. So I would be very careful if you are moving into these growth areas to be sure and set your stops. M-A-R-A. -A. Mara. Marathon Digital. This is an industrial and business support services. Um, RSI is negative. We've got a declining trend. Um, I see the interest level is here because it bounced off this support level right here, which is very important and needed to do that. But it's already, that rally is already starting to fail. PMO is in decline. Um, stochastics are rising, but barely. And look at the relative strength here, really terrible. Um, I don't like this chart. You can see a big decline going on today as that rally failed. This looks like more downside to come. Um, I could see this as a possible shorting candidate. The only issue I have with shorting it is it is at this level of support and that could ultimately hold and cause your short to not work out. But I don't think that level is going to hold. So I think you'd probably be okay with the short there. There's another yeah. reverse pennant. Yes, just, reverse flag right there. And uh, yeah, flag. I've seen them all over the place. Yes, for sure. I mean, we had that decline and then we started this rally out of it. It's set up a lot of these reverse flags on a lot of charts. Um, you know, Again, it's at some important support here. Um, it's strong support in the near, you know, in the intermediate term, longer term, we had support over here that's been broken. 
And long term, this is the next support level right at this level. And that is a long way down. Even if it just gets to this support level, that's a 57% decline. So this one does not look good and um, certainly has the earmarks for a short. Okay. Well, uh, can you pull up the yield of Ray chart? Yes. It's a question here about the two year treasury note. And I don't know the symbol of that. Oh, I picked the wrong one. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> two month is two year. Uh, two, year. two year. Yeah, it doesn't say it in here. Um, down here. Here we go. Right. USTTY. There we go. All right, um, reverse flag, which means um, we should look for a decline coming up um, off of this rally. Um, PMO trying to turn up. I have to say in the short term though, I am I am looking for yields to rise a bit more before we see them turn back down. They hit a very strong support level and they are starting to come back. This is the next level of resistance and that is arriving pretty quickly. So that would be the point where we would start to look for a possible decline in rates. But like I said, I mean, just looking at them bouncing off of the support levels they are, I'm still looking at them rising a bit longer before we start to see them turn lower. What are your thoughts? Um, let's look at longer term. Yeah, it's broken down from that uh, support. So, okay, it, it looks to me like we're at a good s level of support. And as well, as I've been saying, I don't think that the yields are going to be dropping uh, much more until the uh, Fed does something, and depending on what they do, what happens after that. Right. So we okay. are in a, an area to look for a upside reversal, but right. uh, I wouldn't want to be buying the two year treasury at this point. No. All right. Uh, CBOE hold or add. Okay. Um, well, let's see. It's getting overbought. Um, PMO is rising strongly. Stochastics are sitting above 80. There's no sign of this chart to tell me to sell it. Um, I'm looking, when I'm looking to sell or when I'm thinking I need to sell, RSI is overbought. So that is kind of one of the first signs. The other is when you start to lose those stochastics above 80. Those two things are giving you the attention flag that you need to watch the chart. The PMO is still on the rise. It is overbought, but I mean, this one still looks pretty strong on this breakout. Um, I don't see why I would sell it at this point. I think I would be keeping, um, keeping it, but I'd tighten my stop just to make sure that I get to keep what, um, what profit I had gained on it. So I think stops are actually a really good idea right now in general because of the possibility that this is a bear market and we need to be prepared. Um, that's that on this chart. I think it looks pretty good. It's um, overbought, so I wouldn't be looking at it for an entry. Nice breakout um, to new all-time highs. PMO on weekly PMO on a crossover buy signal and rising. Um, everything here tells me that we're going to get rising, that prices are going to continue to rise. MU. Micron. Reverse flag, <laughs> as we were noting on everything. Yeah. Um, super long flagpole right now, too. Um, 
these patterns, when they do break down, the expectation is that you will get a move down the height of the flagpole. So this one's really vulnerable right now. I mean, we're getting the rally off this, but if we lose this rally, there is a good chance we have a big decline to face um, moving forward from there. Um, I don't know that I would be a buyer. Again, this is kind of one of those areas in semiconductors. It's due for a reversal, but it's one of the weakest areas out there. So I don't know that I'd want to be um, taking a chance on this one. It is looking better than it has, but it's not ripe enough for my taste. And the weekly... I mean, just terrible drop from those highs. It's below this level of very strong overhead resistance. It's gonna need to have to pop through that. It's gonna be really tough to do with a PMO that's moving vertically lower and an RSI that is that negative. So I, it's got a lot of work ahead and I it's gonna be tough work because it's got this area of overhead resistance to deal with. IJR. All right. Well, let's look at our. I think I kind of did that, but we'll. I can't remember which one it is. It's the Russell or the. S&P 6. Yeah, I think we looked at this one earlier. Um, Price is failing at overhead resistance. Like I said, we were starting to see a little bit of. Um, participation coming in, but now it's, I mean, I don't expect to see any improvement today on uh, participation. And that sets up a pretty much a, a confirmation of this decline that we're looking at. And really relative strength has started to fail for it. So I don't have high hopes for small caps right now. Okay, uh, Starbucks. Okay. All righty, here we go. Um, Starbucks, I'm seeing a double bottom here, kind of a messy one, but a double bottom nonetheless. Um, breakout now above the 50-day EMA. That has been its area of failure, though, previously with this triple top building here. Um, PMO is rising after a surge, two surges above the signal line, two bottoms above the signal line. Stochastics are rising. I think your bias here is moving bullish. It's not officially a bullish bias because that 20 day EMA has not crossed above the 50 day EMA, but it's on its way to doing so. And the five day EMA has crossed above the 20 day EMA. So this does look pretty good for some more rally coming out of it, but it is in consumer discretionary. We saw that sector. It's probably one of the weakest sectors out there right now. So, you know, jumping in and expanding my exposure, I don't know that I would want to do it in this particular sector, but, you know, if you're, you want to have that exposure, I suppose you could consider Starbucks as a possibility. Let's look at the weekly chart. There's that double bottom that's starting to form. The le level of support that's strongest is down here. So I think it's still vulnerable to go down to that support level since we do have this declining trend intact. So be careful here. This weekly PMO is turning up, but just seeing that price is that far above the really strong support level does make me a little nervous about this one. B U R L. All right. RSI is positive. PMO is trying to turn up right now. Stochastics have turned up. And relative strength is actually doing pretty well for it, um, outperforming its group, outperforming the spy. And nice little rally going on right now. It's not the most exciting chart I've ever seen, um, mainly because that PMO hasn't turned up yet. I mean, it, 
I guess if I look at it, squint and look closely, it has turned up. But this is kind of a boring price pattern moving sideways, not doing much. Um, I'm not sure I'd be looking for a big breakout in consumer discretionary um, apparel retailers. That's just not, that's just not that great. I mean, it needs to have more oomph behind it and it doesn't as far as the PMO. The PMO is just drifting lower on us as price is drifting higher. So setting up a bit of a negative divergence there too. Weekly. All right, well, the weekly doesn't look quite as bad. This is our level of um, support right down here. And it took some time to work its way out of that um, resistance level, but it did. Uh, PMO is still rising, although it looks a little bit toppy here, um, decelerating. Scooter is in the hot zone though. And it is above this area of overhead resistance. So I do see the possibility of it moving higher from here. Four. All right. Um, this is in software, shift four, not one I'm familiar with. Um, getting ready to hit overhead resistance here. It's a nice rally. It's gotten the PMO on a buy signal and the stochastics are above 80 at this point. Certainly seeing some nice um, outperformance coming in. Um, I just worry that it's that close to overhead resistance right now. Um, I mean, it's about another 2% and it's gonna be knocking on its door. It does look set up for a breakout there based on that PMO and um, stochastics. So let's let's bank on a let's bank on a breakout here um, for this one. Let's see what the weekly chart has. Weekly PMO is turned up. Um, we are, this is the area of overhead resistance though, back here too, and that's at 3.77. This is gonna be a tough area of overhead resistance right there at these tops and right here at that top. So there's, it's gonna be a little bit tough here. Like I said, I, I'm leaning bullish on that daily chart. And so it is set up where it could give us that breakout. Um, but, I don't know if I want to get involved in a chart that close to overhead resistance. Yeah, I've got a couple of uh, questions we might address. Okay. Okay. Can you explain a little more why our percentage is 25% of GDP or debt and uh, Japan's is 125%? It seems like ours would be much higher with $34 trillion, uh, in debt. How is this calculated? It's a ratio calculation. You divide the amount of debt by the GDP. So even though ours is absolutely higher than Japan's, uh, it's as a percentage of our GDP, it's, uh, it's much smaller. And let's see, can you describe a reverse flag a bit more? You keep mentioning it. Um, you want to go back to the... the uh, Spy chart. Oh, I don't think I have that. Yeah. I'm... I don't have the one with the. Here, I'll do it quickly. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. Since we're sitting here on the Bitcoin, here is a regular flag formation, and it's uh, this will be the flagpole, and uh, this is the flag, and it's this is the best uh, display you can have. It's you get the flagpole, then your flag is is drooping down from it. Uh, th that is building up compression for a potential breakout. So, you know, if we go to the one year daily chart and that's not the one I want okay on this chart we have 
a flagpole pointing downward and the, the pennant coming up off of it. And, you know, we call it a pennant because it does narrow, uh, but it's essentially the, the same mechanism going for it as the flag. And uh, so, and that's when it's, when a, uh, when you have a flag pull up, upward, you know, like I just showed you on Bitcoin, when you have one of those, that's bullish. When it's reversed, it's bearish because the, you know, in this case, you have a rising wedge that's going to break down. But even if it were flag, uh, it would still be bearish. Okay. Yes, I think that explains it. Okay, uh, you can take it back. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead. I'm. I just realized we're getting low on time, and I need to talk about our website and our new scan alert service. So don't leave because I'll do one more symbol request when I'm done, at least one, maybe two. Um, so I wanted to show you our website, our new subscription. We have a scan alert system. And what I'm doing is I run my proprietary scans and then I give you all of the results. Normally what I do is I go through those results comb through them and come up with my top 10 per week. And so that's where diamonds are derived from. But you can get the raw data with our scan alert system for only $29 a month. And right now, if you do subscribe, it you will get a free month. So it would be $29 for two months. And then of course, we always run a two week uh, trial if you use the coupon code DPTRIAL2, this will be in the YouTube write-up, but if you use the coupon code DPTRIAL2, you will get two free weeks to try any of our reports out, including our new scan alert service. All right, what's our next one? Next one is silver. All Another right. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I... Yes, you didn't do silver. We don't always do silver though, so. All right, so in a declining trend, I mean, if you have anything to add, um, PMO is still in decline. Um, while we could see a rally here, I think overall that we have a bearish bias. The 20 is below the 50 day EMA. We're in a declining trend. It does look like it's found this um, support off this very strong support level. So it has this opportunity right now to um, rally out of the declining trend, but it hasn't done so yet. So I can't get um, particularly bullish on silver. Okay, uh, HSY. Hershey. All right. Uh, let's see here. You know, it's like a it's it's your typical consumer staples chart, big wide trading range, and it's nearing the top of that trading range. So that makes it a little less interesting to me, um, because it is so close to the top of the range, and it is a consumer staple stock, and typically they are range bound. Let's look at the weekly chart. I think to give us a little more perspective here. You can see how it's just been in this trading range for um, well, well over a year. And I would be looking for um, it to test the top of that range. Now, whether it's gonna get above that or not, it's hard to say because we had similar PMO setups at each of these tops and we failed each time. Um, it's just, it's not a very exciting chart to me. Um, the PMO is looking a little toppy on the daily chart. It's not performing well against the S&P, which I really want to do is outperform the benchmark. That's not going to do it for us here. So while I'm bullish on the chart, I think you are going to get a move up to this area of overhead resistance. I just don't know what you're going to see after that. And this is going to be a slow mover. How much upside potential is there? About 6% before it hits that overhead resistance. That's not a lot of upside potential for me. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's not, that it won't go past that level, 
but it is an area where it might find trouble, which is usually the area I usually like to sell a stock. So uh, I need to see a lot more upside potential and I'm not seeing it here. Okay, we've hit time. That's it, that's it. <laughs> all right, thank you all for attending. I hope you do check out our new scan alert service. Um, I think it's uh, very useful to the trader and you guys are all traders. You want more quality symbols in front of your face. That is exactly how you're gonna be able to do that with that scan alert service. Have all those new symbols in front of you all of them lined up, not all lined up to do well, but each of them having at least the basics going right on the chart. Okay, that's all we have. We will wish you good luck and good trading.